Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's talk about the demand equation. And it turns out that when the demand equation is typically shown in textbooks or in classrooms, they kind of present it as if the number of pounds or the quantity in demand hmm, is the independent variable and that the price is the dependent variable. But in real life, it's actually the other way around. The demand will increase when the price goes down and when the price goes up, the demand will decrease. Usually the demand is a result of the price. So typically the price is the, what we would call the independent variable and the demand is the, and, and let's put demand here so you can see what we're talking about. The demand is the dependent variable, but you'll see that they'll try to present it the other way around. So here in our problem, we have the price of tomatoes is $4 per pound, and then the demand is $1 per pound per customer per week. So let's find another graph. So it's $4 per pound, the demand is equal to one. And then they say that for each decrease of $1 per pound, the demand increases by one pound. So if the price goes down to $3 per pound, now we have an increase of one pound more than before, so now we're up to two pounds. If the, if the price goes down another pound, another dollar, it goes up, the demand goes up by another pound. If it goes down another dollar, the demand goes up another, and so forth. But notice now we have an additional problem. So first, let's go ahead and combine these, and notice we have a straight line connecting those points, so we have what we call a linear demand equation. But when the linear equation, there's a secondary problem. Let's continue that and notice when the price goes down to zero, the demand will become equal to five. And when the price goes up to five, the demand goes down to zero. And neither one would be a realistic scenario in the real world. There's always will be people that are still willing to buy tomatoes at $5 per pound. And I bet you when the price goes to zero, in other words, they're giving tomatoes out for free, zero dollars a lot more tomatoes will be so-called bought. The simple people walk in and say, give me all the tomatoes you got. So that's why a demand equation tends to be nonlinear. But the portion in here, in the middle of the curve, is nearly linear. So therefore, a demand function that's linear represents this portion of the complete nonlinear curve. Notice that the price will never go to zero and the demand will never go to zero as well. So that's the realistic real life scenario. But in between, we can go ahead and say we can at least represent it by a linear function. So now we, we've graphed the equation on the graph and let's see here, do we need to do anything else? Find the equation and graph. We also need to find the equation representing the demand. So how do we do that? Well, notice that this is a straight line equation, so it should look something like y equals mx plus b. So in this case, instead of y, we have p, and the p will be a function of x, and instead of x, we have demand. So maybe I want to put a d there, m times d plus b, and so then we can say that the price is a function of demand, but we realize in real life, demand is a function of price. Okay, so first of all, the intercept is going to be at five, so we're going to replace b with five. So p as a function of demand is equal to, let's plug a five in there, and then the slope. Notice the slope is negative, and it looks like for every, so the slope is rise over run, in this case drop over run, so it's one by one, so the slope is a negative one, so we have negative one times the demand plus five, or if you want to use x for a general unit, p of x is equal to minus one times x plus five, and that would be your demand equation. And of course, if you don't like the x, you can go ahead and use this instead. So there we have the demand versus the price. And uh, yes, you can see then if the price, let's see, if the demand goes, well, if demand goes up, price goes down. If demand goes down, price goes up, but it's really not the real world. The real world is price goes up, demand goes down, price goes down, demand goes up, and that's probably a better way to look at it. But again, to find the equation, we simply continue with the line all the way until we have the intercept, we figure out the slope, we then compare it to our y equals mx plus b equation, and there comes your equation representing the demand equation. And of course, again, this is a linear function. The more proper way to look at it would be a nonlinear function, but that's something we'll have to do later, not in this chapter. And that is how it's done.
Good. All right. And then the price will go down. Nobody will grow tomatoes. Oh, that's the supply function that comes up next. Mm -hmm. <laughs>